Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here at Painted Studio. Welcome back. This is part two of our Halloween signs that we started earlier today. So let's see if there's a miracle and I show up on my um, iPad. Not showing up at the moment, nothing new there. So we're gonna give that a wait. Let me move my iPad out of the way. I'll show up there in a moment and bring our signs back so that we can finish them up. Now we put uh, our Artsyville foil adhesive on them at the last live and it's been over an hour so we should be ready to go for uh, releasing more foils. And now I'm live on my own self and then turning my volume down so I don't have to hear myself on echo. Hey Donna, nice to see you here. So we're gonna do the last two colors on the skeleton. And then we're gonna do the last colors on the pumpkins and we're gonna seal them up. So if you remember, we used Razzle Dazzle here up on the top one. We used uh, purple tie dye here on the second one. Um, I'm gonna be knocking things all over the place because these are long and they don't fit my workspace that I have here very well right now. So now I'm just gonna decide whether I'm gonna put the orange here or the green here. I think I'm gonna put the orange here and then the green on the bottom. So this is our orange confetti foil. And we're gonna use a nice big piece of that now. This feels good and sticky. I hope it's uh, not been too humid here today so that we don't have a weird release because, you know, it released beautifully for the other ones and I'd hate to have this not be set up long enough for this to be a good release on these. That would be very disappointing. Although it would show you the difference between letting it cure enough and not letting it cure enough. Okay, so again, our foils have a not so pretty side and the side that you want to see. It's the not so pretty side that goes down to the surface. Gotta... Now, sometimes these foils will have a machining print and I see a little bit of one right there. I don't like that. I don't want that to show up in uh, the middle of my pumpkin face or my skeleton face. So I'm gonna cut another piece. I just happened to catch it. It's almost like a seam through it. And it, while it's not always a problem because this is gonna be a big surface showing the whole pattern, I don't want that to show up there. So I'll save that piece of foil for something else. Let's put this right down here. We're gonna smooth it out with our hands. I'm gonna move some stuff around, maybe get this a little flatter and make my own life a little easier. Of that a little bit so you can see better. All right, let's give this a little scrub back and forth. Now I am being careful up here because I don't want to scrub the foil that I've already laid down. You can kind of make it a little dull doing that and that never looks nice. So um, I'm going to check and see what my release looks like. It looks really good. Let me come here with my fingers, get in, give a little rub. Oh, I got one of those nice little air bubbles that I talk about right over here. So that helps give the foil an even better release. vertically and horizontally, not in circles, because you can actually accidentally create a sc circular scrubbing pattern and that doesn't always look very good. Oh, look how nice that came off. Oh yeah, little sticky spot there that I missed somehow. Fixed. Look how great that looks. Oh, I'm so pleased. All right, so now we're gonna get the bottom of him or them. We're gonna do this one in green confetti. Let's see if anybody's got any. Hey, Maddie, Guerrera, thank you. I, or Joe, is it Joanne? I think your name is your, might be reversed. 
Hi, Catherine. Nice to see you there. Thank you so much for everybody coming in. Okay. Now this is bright and colorful and looking very Halloween-y on your front door area. Um, this happened, the, 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 the four skulls was a big seller for me last year. And if you heard my other live earlier today, you also heard me say that <clears throat> they had a, Michael's has a coffin cut out. And um, last year they had one that was just the pumpkin at the top of a long board. And I did those as autumn and harvest signs. And they were very popular. Um, but they didn't do the harvest ones this year. They did a, a, a stack of five um, pumpkins instead. So we're doing one of those to see how they go. I've already sold several of these this year. So... Um, I actually needed to make another one because we've got our farmer's market coming up in about a week and a half. And this is what the place that I find that these happen to be the most popular for sale. And as we get into spooky season, um, they become more and more popular. There's a little bit right there. There's a little blobby spot right there. There we go. And as you can see, I can lay my foils back down where if I think there's a little skip spot, I can go over it with my fingernail. Or if there's one that I can see like right here, I just come back in and give it a rub with my finger. I, if you notice, I don't come back in with the scrub brush because it, you can scrub and dull the foil and that's what I'm trying to avoid. But darn, these look came out really really nicely I'm very pleased so how cute are these I mean I'll hold them up at the end so you can see the whole thing all together um, but we go from the green to the purple to the orange to the groovy kaleidoscope they are just as cute as can be and then we're gonna do our pumpkins and we're gonna seal this side up. Now, these come so that you could do with the other side. Uh, and I will do the other side, just not um, tonight, because it's getting late and I maybe wanna go home and, I don't know, see my family. And if not my family, I'll go see my dogs. <laughs> um, Again, if, any, if you were watching earlier, you might have heard that we have a guest puppy, my my grand puppy coming to, that's staying with us right now, who is the cutest thing. But he also does not sleep through the night, which is why I have bad hair and no makeup today, because um, we've had him for a couple nights already, and he's, he likes to bark in the middle of the night, and he wants to play in the middle of the night. All right, we're going to use muted gold. On our five pumpkins, um, I had used uh, our wonderful V-Mask brand foils that are more um, stony, a little more um, conservative, a little more um, organic looking than the really bright colors. So we're going to use that, some more of that. We're going to use muted gold. Again, V-masks often have a dark or a different looking back than our fabric foils. And it's the not so pretty side that goes to the surface that you're foiling because the foil is mounted on the back of the carrier film. And I've rolled this under, which is not what I wanted to do. There we go. Now it used to be the old foil adhesives that we used to use. If you did that, if you rolled the foil under, you ruined the adhesion right there and you couldn't get a good release on your foil to save yourself. Uh-uh, not with the Artsyville foil adhesive. You can have an oop moment like that, like I do, because these V-mask foils like to roll up really tight. Um, and still get a gorgeous release on them. 
And V-Mask, these V-Mask foils are not fabric friendly. V-Mask is a specific manufacturer. They tend to make these sort of stony foils. If you're not sure when you're looking on our website, which is a V-Mask foil, you can always ask me, but I guarantee you if it says fabric friendly, it's not a V-Mask foil. Most of the V-Mask foils, like I said, have these sort of stony, organic, a little less bright and colorful, a little more earthy, organic looking. Let's see what we got coming up. Oh, yes. Oh, that muted gold is so pretty on the pumpkin. Look at how gorgeous that came out. And again, great release on there. And let's see what it was. Oh, the last one, I think we're going to use sunwashed gold. Now, if you remember, if you saw earlier, we used cracked copper here. We used um, terracotta here. Terracotta is the only foil um, that I have from V-Mask that comes out matte like this, but it will be shiny once we put the glossy top coat on it because we want it to look consistent. If I wanted to keep this beautiful matte finish on there, I would um, seal it with a dull top coat not a glossy one. Okay, this one is called Stonewashed Gold. Tape back on the roll, so again, it doesn't go rolling around the room and unrolling. Okay. Let's see if I can get this down without anything rolling. Ah, I missed it. Almost. I was close. I have a little piece to get right here at the bottom because I went a little high. Not a big deal. It's not like that's never happened to me before. I just don't scrub all the way up to this sharp edge here so that when I come back and put more foil right on this spot, um, it blends instead, to, instead of having a seam. feel. This is so pretty. A little bit right at the edge needs to get. Sometimes I forget to get all the way to the edge. Okay. Oh my goodness, I did not realize this. It's been a very long time since I used the stonewashed gold. It actually comes out matte as well. I hadn't realized that. Um, again, because I haven't used this in so long, it's been a really, I thought it was gonna be glossy, so that actually is a nice surprise for me. So I now know I have a second one that comes out super matte like this. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. But again, we're going to gloss coat it and they'll all look shiny. So this sunwashed gold is very pretty. It's amazing what I can forget when I don't use something for a while. Totally forgot that this was going to come off on this mat. I thought it was going to be shiny. But then again, I have no memory some days, so... It's a miracle I remembered to find the name tag on this one. <laughs> okay. Let me check and see if there's any questions. Uh, where did I get the skulls? I got them at Joann's. I'm not, sorry, not Joann's, at Michael's. Uh, Michael's carries these every year. Um, you can even order them online. Um, they're listed at something like $29.99, but they're always on sale. You know, everything at Michael's is always on sale. So they were 40% off of that. And then I, if you are on my personal page, you will see that I said I got my very first uh, senior citizen discount the other day. So I got another 10% off of these. And Michael's starts their senior discounts at like 50 or 55. They used to do it with an AARP card. So the woman who was checking me out couldn't remember exactly how old it was, but she said, I'm giving it to you because you're over 50. 
Okay, cool. I'll take a discount wherever I can get it. All right, so now we're going to seal these and we're gonna seal this with a product called C500. I could also use AquaGuard. I happen to be out of uh, AquaGuard right now and I have C500 right here. C500 is Faux FX, uh, most durable exterior rated um, top coat. Super, super strong stuff. It is, however, on delicate work like fine painting or glazes, a little bit uh, co-solvent, which means it can lift and dissolve that. Now, it's not a problem over foils. I never worry about it over foils. It'll be just fine. But because these are going to hang outside, I wanted to put a nice durable top coat on them. And all we're going to do is just brush it on with a nice brush. I don't use paint brushes. I don't use sponge. I mean, I don't use um, standard paint brushes. I don't use sponge brushes. For top coat, sponge brushes create bubbles. Standard paint brushes, their bristles are too big. Um, and this is a water-based top coat. Uh, has a little bit of an odor, but not, not much. But this is one of their few top coats that does not go on, a water-based top coat that doesn't go on white. It goes on clear, and it's just the nature of the beast. But it's going to make, it makes a beautiful top coat for things like this. And you can see now as I'm brushing up, I'm sorry, I've started slightly below my camera range to um, top coat that terracotta. But you can see here on the, the uh, stonewash gold that was very matte, surprised me how beautiful it picks up that shine here. Um, makes it beautifully glossy. Now this product has some nice self-leveling qualities very, very durable. Um, you can order it with uh, UV protectant added um, because there is no UV product in here to keep things from fading in the sunlight. It's just exterior rated, so it protects other exterior rated um, items. Set coat is exterior rated. Um, foils are weird. Foils can be good outside and they can be bad. Now I've had some that I put on furniture because I do this, I test all kinds of stuff outside. Um, I've had some foils that I've put stuff on, left it outside for a year, color held up fantastic. I have plat planters outside that I have, I, I foiled three or four years ago. They outside every day, winter and summer. Uh, for all four seasons, winter, spring, summer, fall, held up great. Some of them I will have put in a window for a month's decorations and they didn't la they faded in less than a month. And so you kind of have to test them. Blues tend to be the hardest ones to stay really vibrant and some of the solid reds. Um, I will say that things like our blue glitter stars, our red glitter stars, uh, they both, I, I did a 4th of July bunch of stuff and some of those pro, uh, some of those pieces faded in um, a month's time uh, in, in sunlight in my window. And my window doesn't even get direct sunlight. Um, but like I said, I have other stuff. It's worn like iron. It's been amazing. Um, I did a whole bunch of outdoor chairs for my backyard this year in the foil that I knew held up because I'd done it on something else. They've been outside all summer long, never inside once. Oh my gosh. Holding up like you can't believe. All right, so I switched that around just because uh, it was getting a little too long and I was gonna start shoving my freshly top coated piece into stuff that I didn't want to have it uh, get product on it. But this will seal this up beautifully. It will wear well. It's going to wear like iron on this. And it will be dry to the touch, you know, 30, 45 minutes. 
but like all water-based products, it's 30 days to a full complete cure because cure and dry are two different things. Um, dry means if you touch it, it feels dry. Cured means it has all the chemicals have bonded, all of the uh, moisture has um, gone out of the product. Oh, I forgot. I got to foil that guy. I forgot to foil the cap of the pumpkin, so I'm just going to seal around that carefully. We'll go grab a little piece of something, something to use for that to, feel, to foil up the, the stem here and then quickly seal it up. Um, yeah, so chemical curing is different. Um, think of like cured meats. If you hang meat to cure, sausages, ham, stuff like that, it has to hang for a while for all the curing to happen. Um, and that's what happens here. It's all the chemicals doing all their complete bonding, all the moisture completely evaporating, all of that. All right. I'm going to slide this down just so you can see the cap here. I need to grab a little piece of something. Oh, let me go grab something here. Craft went right behind me, and then we are going to use cracked copper bronze. Almost forgot to seal up the top. over there so nothing bad happens to it. So again, I am being careful not to go all the way to that edge. Do a little scrub with my little scrubber brush. Peel it back. Oh, that's a that's nice on there. Now, I'm probably going to mess up this top coat here just a little bit but it's still wet enough that it's not going to be too big an issue. I just want to go along here with my finger, get that seam, and then I'll quickly recoat where I laid this foil on it by mistake because we had to finish that up there. Look how great that looks right there though. Oh wow. That is ideal. That looks like perfect capper for that. So let's get a little top coat. I'm going to quickly brush that since this is still nice and wet. That's not going to hurt anything. And I'm going to seal up that foil right there as well. Beautiful. Oh, and I will, again, I will hold this up at the end so you can see better what it looks like. But let me set this down over here to the side so that I can then seal up our skulls. So let's come down here. Let's see if I'm missing any questions. Hi, Eric and Tanya. I'm not sure if it's Eric or Tanya watching, so hi to both of you. Thank you for coming in. Okay, so again, we're going to go down here. I'm probably a little off camera. We're going to seal this up with the varnish plus on this side. And also the reason I want to seal these right away is that when I flip them over and do the other side, all of this is protected. It's all sealed up so I don't scuff it or anything. And I will try to be finishing up the other side on Friday. I am not going to be in tomorrow. Fortunately, I will be out of the studio for the day. Let's seal all this up. And if a little bit dribbles through the teeth or the eye sockets, before I start on the other side, I'll give it a quick sanding 
to get any raised spots that I don't want to have on that side taken care of. I'm not putting on heavy, 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 so I shouldn't have too much of a problem, but anybody who's worked with top coats knows that somehow they always find a spot to dribble through. If there's an opening, they'll find it. Like I said, these skulls were very, very popular in my area, um, all foiled up like this. And the skulls are big enough right here in the foreheads that if you have like a cricket or a silhouette or something, um, you can cut out lettering that says, you know, trick or treat, happy Halloween, spooky, scary, ghosty, you know, whatever, and put it right across their foreheads. Although I don't normally do that because um, I use the foils and the foils can get very heavy on the pattern and I don't want to make it so that um, people are trying to squint and figure out what they say. I just kind of like to leave the, the skulls as they are, but there's options uh, on ways to do stuff. Now the pumpkins, not quite the same thing, especially on the front side. You probably do something on the back, but on the front side, those pumpkins that have, you know, sort of a panel link cut into them to make them look like the ridges of the pumpkin. Um, and lettering over those would be a massive pain in the neck. I would letter with stencils instead of trying to cut vinyl for, on a Cricut to do that. Okay, let's get the last head here. Starting to get darker earlier. You know, I used to work in here sometimes until 11 o'clock at night and it was still light out at like nine. Now it's, it's a little after seven and it's pitch dark out. I <laughs> just not, it's that, that winter lighting is catching up with me. Okay. So that's done. I will put a cover on that and I'll wash that. Otherwise the brush will be hard forever. So I'm going to flip the camera up so that you're looking at me and then I can hold the hangers up so you can see them in full. Let me see if I've missed any questions. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So back up a little bit here. Here is our pumpkin. I'm going to actually turn it on its side so you can see it full length. So there are five pumpkins on here and I just think these are so cute. And I really love how they came out. Now on the camera, they look a little monotone in person. There's loads of shimmer and shine with these different metal patterns. Um, I'm sorry, they just don't show up that well on the camera right now. So I apologize for that, but they are really beautiful. Okay, and here are our skulls. Again, I'm gonna sit back, come back so you can see me. I'm going the wrong way. You can see the whole length of them. I think this is super cute. I really love how it came out. And then you can see how they are right side up. So we started with um, crazy kaleidoscope on top, orange confetti, purple tie dye, and then green confetti on the bottom. I'm going to set these over here like this so they can all dry tonight. And then I'm going to come back and work on them on Friday before I'm out of town for Society of Gilders next week. Sorry, turning the cameras. You're looking at me and I'm going to pour my top coat back into my jug. There we go. Don't want to waste it. And sometimes when I put things in containers like this and forget to label them, forget a lid on them, eh, they get wasted and I don't want to do that. Their C500 is a terrific product. Okay, so of course, if you have any questions, don't hesitate. 
to put them in the comments. If you don't remember what products I use, I will be more than happy to write out the answer. Um, again, if I didn't explain something in a way that made sense to you, don't hesitate to ask. I'm on, you know, gram puppy grandma sleep right now, so I am not necessarily my <laughs> most coherent. And I will talk to everybody on Friday. Can't wait to see you. Hopefully I will have had a little sleep by then. I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, before I forget, again, this month's product of the month is all of our transfers. So if you go on to paintedstudio.com and go into our transfers, uh, go look up our transfers, use the code TRANSFER20 at checkout and save 20% on all our transfers through the rest of the month. All right, everyone, have a great evening. Thanks for coming in. Bye-bye.